Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of Collecting Japanese Prints. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where every Wednesday we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. Uh, today's Woodblock Wednesday features a, another Western artist working in Japan and in Asia. Uh, this, these prints that I'll show today are part of my upcoming exhibition on Western artists working in Asia. The exhibition should go up on my website, collectingjapaneseprints.com, in a few weeks, I would say two or three weeks. Um, I, might, I was kind of hoping at the end of uh, September, but there's a couple of works that are on their way. So I'm thinking now the exhibition will go up uh, early October or so. I'll keep you posted. And um, the, the artist that we'll be talking about today is Lillian Miller. And she's actually a really interesting artist for a lot of reasons. I mean, she of course produced beautiful artwork, but her story is also interesting. Um, she's an American artist. She's a female American artist. And I often get uh, you know, questions about were there any you know, female ukiyo-e artists? There were a couple, um, but there were more female artists in the 20th century. And in terms of Shinhanga, um, she was one of a, a handful and she was an American. Um, she was the daughter of a Korean ambassador and she grew up mostly uh, in Asia as a child. And she, grew, she took a lot of her, her inspiration for her art directly from Asia as, as opposed to some of the other Shinhanga artists that were Westerners who were more trained in a, in a Western um, sort of way of, of doing art and they drew their inspiration on Western um, art. She actually uh, drew her inspiration on Eastern um, traditions and Eastern art. So her work is still an interesting mix of East meets West, but she engaged um, Asian art on its own in some ways, and the filter was different. It was certainly different from, you know, Capillari's work or Charles Bartlett's work or other of her contemporaries like Bertha Lum. Um, and so I think I should point that out. I think that makes it very interesting. And she was also a very independent, strong-willed um, artist. She did not work with Watanabe to produce her her prints. She actually self-published them. And th that is fascinating. This is an early period uh, artist from the, from we're, we're talking about prints from the 20s and 30s. And, you know, she was one of the first artists like Hiroshi Yoshida, like Goyo, to actively pursue her own work. And she, you know, she distributed in an in interesting way. She had a network of friends who were mostly female and her artwork was, you know, sort of filtered through friends and, and connections that way. But also there were, there they did sell well in Asia, but she shipped them back to the U.S. and other parts of the West. So you, you occasionally see them in Japan come up for sale, but by and large, they, they're often coming up for sale in, in the United States and in the West. So uh, without further ado, I think that that, that background was necessary though, because her work is really interesting based on, on those um, aspects. Um, but uh, let's go to the, well, actually, we're not at, at my um, table because I still have a lot of artwork uh, on the table. So we're in my office, so we're gonna go to the, the print cabinet and have a look, thanks. So I'm gonna walk over here. So he, uh, I'm gonna back up a little bit. There's like boxes and stuff in here with artwork yet to be opened. But um, I gotta be careful where I step. Uh, but these are two works here by Lillian Miller. And, you know, I, I picked two works that were different in terms of coloration. Um, my exhibition will feature several of her prints that, you know, they're similar, but, you know, I picked two that are very striking in their differences. And the first work here is a print featuring 
of course, Mount Fuji, the iconic symbol of Japan, with a beautiful sort of uh, setting. It looks like uh, dusk. It could be dawn, but I, I kind of see it at, uh, oh, it says moonlight, so obviously it's in the, in the, in the, um, in the evening. And you see the light off the water from the moon and the sail there with the white, very similar color to Mount Fuji. It almost echoes Mount Fuji's snow cap. And it's an idyllic scene. I mean, it's as beautiful as Shinhanga prints get. And this particular print um, was personalized to one of Lillian Miller's friends, Ruth. And that's typical. You see a lot of her work with dedications and inscriptions. And that is because a lot of her work while she was alive was sent to her friends. And her friends helped in some ways spread the word about her art. And, and so the, it was not an enterprise uh, like Watanabe that was producing hundreds of prints or hundreds of impressions of each design. Her work is much rare, much more rare than, say, Bartlett or Capillari or certain designs, I would say, specifically. But she, she has a larger body of work than Capillari. I think Capillari designed two dozen um, prints for Watanabe. She, she produced a lot more work. But Within each work, the additions are actually on the low end, um, and most of them are not numbered. And I don't think it's because she wanted to produce a lot. I don't know if she thought she could sell so many. And so it's very rare to see a print with a, a specific edition. But when you do see one, the editions are low. There are editions of 25, 45, um, 50. You rarely see editions of 100 or so on her uh, designs. So it, it really says a lot about how she produced her work and how it was distributed. So I'm going to zoom in so you could see how beautiful this print is. And you have to please excuse my shadow. I'm covering, unfortunately, the light overhead as I walk by. So I'm going to see if I can position myself in a different way. What you may not see, I'm going to try to point it out, is this wonderful wood grain in the water here. That you, you, It's much more visible here, but it extends beyond that area into the design. I mean, it's beautiful. It echoes the water's flu, fluidity. It kind of mimics kind of almost a wave. But it creates also really wonderful atmospheric quality. You could kind of see it um, around Mount Fuji as well. It, uh, it's just very hard to capture on a phone. I mean, it, it's a stunning print. Uh, iconic, it's what you can, what you would, uh, when you think of Lillian Miller, you think of this design and another, you know, half dozen of works that are just beautiful. And, and this is another one that um, is iconic. Uh, and this is, these are figures um, that are about to walk over a bridge. Um, it's, this print is called Rain Blossoms Japan. And there's two versions of this print. She was interested in capturing sort of different atmospheric qualities, um, like uh, you could, you know, we could we could think of Hiroshi Oshida, who did various impressions of different um, times of the day. And in this version, see, let me see if I could get the, the book here behind me. I want to point this out. This is the the book on Lillian Miller between two worlds. This is a. I highly recommend this book. Uh, it's a, it's a really well written, and then and of course it also has illustrations of her most popular uh, designs. And here we have images of both prints. You'll see that the copy that I have here, which will be available on my website soon, is actually kind of a darker impression with a a lot more bokashi or color gradation light to dark. It, it really creates a really powerful atmospheric quality. Whereas in, in, the, in the one that's illustrated in the book, it's a little bit lighter. Assuming that the illustration is accurate, sometimes they're not all that accurate. But 
I've seen many versions or many impressions of this design, and, and they do exist in this coloration. And you could see here you have the exact same design, the same blocks were used to print this, this design, but different colors were used and you get a very different effect. The, the, the top one has a lot of gray and blue, and of course the bottom one has this kind of reddish pink, almost ochre color. Um, it's a very striking uh, impression or, or version. So let me let me just close this so you could go, we can come back and look at the actual print. I'm gonna zoom in so you could see how beautiful it's been printed. There's a, a beautiful sort of simplicity and quiet um, to this design. It's very elegant. Uh, it's striking. The rain coming down in long strokes um, and these beautiful umbrellas that have been folded um, out. It, it, it's, it's representational, but it almost has this is interesting contemporary, almost abstract quality where you, where you really just see are these, these umbrellas. It, it almost reminds me of the work by Clifton Carhu, if, if you guys are familiar uh, with his work. And if not, I would encourage you to um, look him up. He, he's a Western artist, also working in Japan. I will feature a lot of his prints as well in this upcoming exhibition. And there's a print that he made of Kyoto, of people just walking by with, with uh, umbrellas, but it's an overhead view and you only see the umbrellas. You don't really see the people. And this design kind of reminds me of that. Of course, you see the silhouettes of the people walking over the bridge, but this is a very decorative, very, you know, this design is heavily influenced by textiles and, and by the, the umbrellas themselves. You could see how Lillian Miller was much more um, interested in just representing the, the, these beautiful umbrellas and this um, gorgeous background. The, the people aren't really uh, uh, a matter of concern in this design. I'm gonna zoom in so you could see the brilliant strong colors in this design. I think Lillian Miller is one of the top 20th century Shinhanga artists. Uh, I, I think um, in many ways she hasn't received her due. Uh, her, her, her designs are fantastic. Um, and, and she was a quite talented considering that this was all done by her designing the, the blocks. I believe she may have carved and printed her, her works or if not hired someone to carve them but she, I believe, printed the, the prints herself. And so to be such an independent artist, um, particularly working in Asia at this time, which was very male dominated, it, it's, it, there were so many obstacles for her. And, and she clearly was able to um, deal with all of them and, and produce a beautiful body of work. And these two prints are, are exceptional examples of that. Other elements I think in her designs is I think she, besides having a great sense of color, she she also has a great sense of light. And um, this design could easily become very flat, uh, but the way that it's printed is actually quite three-dimensional. You it, it opens up, particularly in person, and I'm, I'm afraid that the my, my iPhone camera doesn't uh, uh, really convey the three-dimensional aspect of this impression. But yeah, the particularly the way that the printing is surrounding the center, the it opens up the view uh, and it, it feels like the viewer could just walk through this design. So I'm going to zoom in one last time so that you can see these beautiful impressions. And of course, as I mentioned, 
They will be available on my website, collectingjapaneseprints.com, soon. But this is a really neat uh, sneak peek at two wonderful works that uh, are, will, will go up soon. You know, the printing on these two are just so great, and, I, and I'm sorry that you're not here to be able to see this because they, I don't think uh, the video really captures the the printing. And I see a few of you have just joined us. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm going to encourage uh, all of you who, who just joined joined us to, to you know, watch the beginning because I, I provided a little bit of uh, background information on, on the artist, uh, Lindley and Miller. Well, thank you very much uh, for joining me on another edition of Woodblock Wednesday. I'm working really hard to get our, the next exhibition up and I'm hoping that it'll go up in a couple of weeks and there'll be wonderful um, prints by Western artists working in Asia. Miller is one of them, Carhu, uh, Jacques Allais, uh, several others. And these, these designs are the top designs that the artists have produced. So I hope that all of you will have a look. And meanwhile, if you're interested in learning more about Japanese prints or learning more about what books are available on the subject, feel free to uh, go to my website, uh, collectingjapaneseprints.com. You'll find a lot of information there, some books and other things maybe to, to tempt you, but there's also just a lot of free information that I think might you might find useful and, and helpful. So thank you again for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.